I was inspired to teach after going to a talk at my children's school about how they teach reading. It really made me want to go back to school, actually, and really want to learn again. I was really excited by it. Um, and it kind of opened my eyes to what teaching and learning could be. It's really important to me to bring a subject alive for children, particularly in reception. It's a challenge to make the subject accessible to their five-year-old minds, to make it really real for them. Um, for example, when we were talking about Thanksgiving during our celebrations topic, I didn't just want the children to know why the separatists were thankful. I really wanted them to understand why. Obviously, I didn't actually want them to know what it felt like to starve, but I did want them to empathise. We engaged in some full-on role-play. I have um, quite a lot of rather good actresses in my class, and so we had a lot of stomach-clutching and groaning as we were thrown across the stormy sea in the Mayflower and then experienced the horror and hardships of the barren, wintry landscape as we arrived at Plymouth. When we eventually made it to the harvest and could celebrate, the children really understood why they, why they should feel thankful. Or, when we were thinking about the scale of dinosaurs... It means nothing to a five-year-old to say that Sora Poseidon was 18 and a half metres tall, but sending a helium balloon 18 and a half metres into the air in Highgate Woods gave them a much clearer understanding. Seeing how many people we could fit in a dinosaur footprint two metres wide made the scale much more real to them. As a teacher, I don't see it as my job to tell the children things, to kind of only impart knowledge. Rather, I really want to instil a love of learning and to encourage my children to become independent learners. I plan a lot of group work or partner work so that the children have lots of opportunities to talk about what they're exploring and learning. Sometimes this can be tricky. It's a hard lesson to learn working in a team. It's a bit like learning to share. But already in reception, the children are seeing the fruits of this collaborative approach. Recently, in an English lesson, after looking at the weird and wonderful characters in Dr Seuss's Circus McGurkus, the children worked in groups to create their own bizarre animal-inspired circus acts. Through much kind of frantic drawing and excited talk and laughter, the children created such bonkers performers as a whale ringmaster who shot his hat high into the air through blowing water out of his blowhole, or uh, there was a lion seal who had a massive bushy mane and he flipped monkeys into the air with his seal tail. There's something really exhilarating about the sparking of ideas and the endless possibilities that comes from working together with a group. I'm also passionate about children thinking for themselves. I went on a fantastic Philosophy for Children training course last year and have been using thinking and techniques from this approach in my teaching. One of the ways I've done this was when we were learning about the gunpowder plot. I didn't just want to tell the children the story. I wanted them to have some feeling for the motives. In a Philosophy for Children style debate, the children had to decide who was right. James I, who told the people that they could only go to his church or they had to leave the country, or Guy Fawkes, who thought it was wrong to tell people what to believe and therefore was justified in wanting to kill the king. The children chose sides and had to explain why they had made that choice. On hearing others' thoughts and ideas, they could then change sides or change their minds. It was a really good exercise in listening and thinking. Lots of children did change their minds, some several times. And then some children set independently set up their own party, believing that neither Guy Fawkes nor James I were right. This impressed me. I found this really sophisticated for reception children. In reception, our planning is very much led by the children's interests and needs, and this really helps them to feel ownership and responsibility for their learning. To celebrate the end of our recent dinosaur topic, we set up a dinosaur museum. As teachers, we provided the ground rules that everyone needed to produce an exhibit, and as part of our English planning, the children wrote a dinosaur fact book each. But everything else was completely led by the children. They chose what to make, how to make it, they chose what to research, they decided what would be in the museum, that we needed a bookshop, that we needed a cafe, what would be sold in the cafe, they made the drinks and the cakes for the cafe, they produced signage, they made maps. It was fantastic! Having this kind of ownership and responsibility for the whole project, the children were really proud and when they invited their parents, it was amazing because they were so delighted to share their learning with their families. It was really touching. As a parent of two primary age children myself, I'm really keen to involve parents in their children's learning. Apart from inviting them to our museums and assemblies, I also try to involve parents as much as possible in homework activities but in a way where they're not doing the homework or just helping. For example, I might try and make tasks as open as possible, but in the guidance provide opportunities for discussion or suggest some open questioning or ask parents to ask the children how they work something out. 
This weekend's homework for reception, the children are going to be reading the storybooks that they've just written to their parents. And then, as the homework, the parents are getting to write a book review, which we will then stick in the children's learning journeys. I think this is a really nice way to get comments back on the children's learning from the parents. I've always played music or sung badly in bands, and after I graduated from my teacher training, I went on a brilliant intensive primary music course. I try and bring music or sound and composition into lots of areas of my teaching, into maths, into English and topic lessons. I love a good sing-song, but I'm really interested in composition, creating soundscapes, for example. When we were learning about Guy Fawkes, we listened to some firework sounds and then the children recreated their own firework sounds using percussion instruments and their voices. The children then worked together to assemble the different sounds into a firework display, ending in a huge climax and then a little petering out of the last <coughs> sounds of sparkles. It was wonderful. We created our own firework symphony. It was brilliant. I'm coming up to my final term of my induction year as a newly qualified teacher and I have really enjoyed my teaching so far at Norfolk House. I love the fact that I have the trust and freedom to bring so much of what I feel really passionate about and what I'm really motivated by to my teaching. I've also really enjoyed learning myself. I have learned so much in this past year from the children, from other staff and from my weekly discussions with Mrs Ellison who is my teaching mentor.